The MST Respiratory Protector, a compressed breathing air purifier, is a system designed to remove or reduce selected contaminants that are found in standard compressed airlines. The Respiratory Protector allows you the advantage of connecting directly to shop air from a standard compressed air source to provide breathing quality air to face masks, hoods, or other air-powered devices. This eliminates the need of providing a separate breathing air compressor or air supply to the work area. The respiratory protector has a four-stage filtration system and a battery-operated carbon monoxide monitor that is housed in a compact, lightweight, portable carrying case. The portability allows carrying the unit to each job site. Air entering the respiratory protector filtration system at the inlet is usually contaminated with oil, water, rust, scale, and often deadly carbon monoxide gas. As the air passes through the first stage of the MST pre-filter, particulate matter is trapped and retained. The air then enters the second stage of the pre-filter, which coalesces liquid contaminants down to 75 hundredths of a micron in size and three-tenths of a micron for particulate matter, with an efficiency rating of 99.97%. The liquid contaminants are trapped in the lower chamber of the pre-filter and expelled out of the unit by the float drain. The air entering the air scrubber inlet is 99.97% free of liquid water and contaminants. The third stage of the air scrubber contains an odor-absorbing activated charcoal which also collects various gaseous hydrocarbons such as oil fumes and benzene. The fourth stage of the air scrubber contains a low temperature catalyst which converts carbon monoxide gas into carbon dioxide. The unique catalyst also converts nitric oxide, ozone, ammonia, MEK, acetone and methyl alcohol. Finally, the air passes through a one micron filtration disc before entering the regulator, which is used to adjust the air pressure to the operator's mask, hood, or air-powered device. A sample of the filtered air is taken and passed through the carbon monoxide monitor. The carbon monoxide monitor continuously checks the air quality per OSHA and CSA regulations and digitally displays the amount present. An audible and visual alarm will alert operators if any dangerous levels of carbon monoxide exist. If there is a low battery condition, a visual amber-colored light will light to alert the operator. The carbon monoxide monitor will also sound to alert the operator that a problem has developed in the system. The monitor will sound due to one or both of the following conditions. The filter cartridge's life is exhausted, or the monitor is out of calibration. When changing the filters, remember to change all three filters at the same time. Also, always turn off the air supply and bleed the air pressure before disassembling the unit to avoid injury. In changing the unit's first and second stages, first remove the plastic drain tube by pulling down on the retaining collar to release the drain tube. Unscrew the pre-filter bowl assembly element from the manifold and clean the bowl assembly in mild soap and water, blowing dry with low pressure compressed air. Remove the two-stage pre-filter element by unscrewing the end cap retaining nut and pulling the pre-filter element down over the center rod manifold. Discard the clogged pre-filter element. Inspect the manifold for dirt and contaminants. Clean as required and inspect the O-ring located inside the manifold for any cuts or cracks. If required, replace the O-ring to prevent air leakage. Install a new two-stage pre-filter element by sliding the new element over the center rod on the manifold so that the rod protrudes from the end of the element and the element is squarely seated against the manifold with the rod centered in the element. Screw the end cap retaining nut onto the threaded portion of the rod until the end cap retaining nut is seated properly against the end of the pre-filter element and the element has come solidly against the shoulder in the manifold. Apply a light film of petroleum jelly on the beveled edge of the pre-filter bowl. 
Reassemble by screwing the bowl assembly into the manifold until tight. Hand tighten only. Be sure the O-ring is properly seated in the manifold to prevent cutting the O-ring. Reattach the drain tube by sliding the drain tube into the end of the fitting and pushing the retaining collar up to lock the drain tube in place. Be sure to slide the outside diameter of the drain tube completely into the inside diameter of the fitting or the collar will not lock the tube in place. Loosen the screw from the lower support bracket. Loosen the five manifold bolts enough to allow the third and fourth stage filter tube assemblies to move freely. Remove the two corner bolts with their washers. Slide out the third and fourth stage filter tube assemblies. Remove the old third stage filter cartridge and cap gasket from the third stage aluminum tube. Clean the aluminum tube in mild soap and water and wipe dry. Refill the third stage aluminum tube by sliding the new third stage filter cartridge into the aluminum tube from the bottom. Make sure that the flow direction arrow is pointing down for proper operation. Remove the sealing label and install a new cap gasket on the top of the third stage aluminum filter tube assembly. Slide the new third stage aluminum filter tube assembly into the air scrubber on the inlet side. Remove the fourth stage filter cartridge and cap gasket from the fourth stage aluminum tube. Clean the aluminum tube in mild soap and water and wipe dry. Refill the fourth stage aluminum tube by sliding the fourth stage filter cartridge into the aluminum tube from the top. Make sure that the flow direction arrow on the new fourth stage filter is pointing up for proper operation. Remove the sealing label and install a new cap gasket on the bottom of the fourth stage aluminum filter tube assembly. Slide the new fourth stage aluminum filter tube assembly into the air scrubber on the outlet side. Tighten the manifold bolts in sequence from the center outward to 100 inch-pounds. Repeat the sequence and torque the bolts to 250 inch-pounds. Recheck for proper torque limit. Tighten the screw on the lower support bracket to prevent any damage from occurring when transporting the respiratory protector. Dispose of the used filters in a landfill according to local, state, and federal regulations. Retighten the necessary parts to stop any leakage. Flush the system with compressed air for five minutes and calibrate the monitor. When calibrating the unit, always turn off the air supply and bleed the air pressure before working with the unit to avoid injury. Turn on the monitor and allow at least five minutes for it to warm up. Check the battery power. You will see the green light on if the battery is OK. Failure to check the battery may cause a false reading. Disconnect the sampling tube from the lower outlet porting block to the monitor by pulling the retaining collar on the plastic fitting to release the sampling tube. Connect the fittings and tubing to the calibration gas regulator while the monitor is warming up. Do not attach the regulator to the calibration gas cylinder until you're ready to calibrate, as the gas will flow as soon as the regulator is screwed onto the cylinder. Attach the zero air cylinder to the regulator. Locate the zero adjustment potentiometer. The zero potentiometer adjustment is located on the right side of the monitor's display. Observe the display on the instrument. The reading on the display should be on zero after approximately one minute. If the display does not read zero, adjust the zero potentiometer such that the display now reads zero. Use the tool provided to adjust the potentiometer. Use of other tools could result in damage to the potentiometer. When the monitor reads zero, unscrew the cylinder from the regulator. Gas will flow until the cylinder is disconnected. Screw the regulator into the span gas cylinder. Note the concentration of carbon monoxide printed on the cylinder. 
Locate the span adjustment potentiometer. The span adjustment potentiometer is located on the right side of the monitor's display. The display should read the concentration of carbon monoxide printed on the cylinder. The reading should be displayed after approximately one minute. The alarm will sound at 10 for units in the United States and 5 for units in Canada. If the display does not read the concentration of carbon monoxide printed on the cylinder, adjust the span potentiometer. To avoid damage to the meter, use the tool provided in the kit. When the monitor reads the concentration printed on the cylinder, unscrew the cylinder from the regulator. The monitor will continue to sound until it reads 10 for those units in the United States and 5 in Canada. Reinsert the monitor's sampling tube into the plastic fitting located at the outlet porting block and push the retaining collar back to secure the tube. Be sure to slide the outside diameter of the sampling tube completely into the inside diameter of the fitting or the collar will not lock the tube in place. Double check the connection before putting the filtration system in use. Connect the air supply back into the system and pressurize to flush out span calibration gas from the monitor. After a few minutes, the span gas will be purged from the monitor. Write down your name and the date on a log sheet each time the monitor is calibrated.